Um, <clears throat> so we're talking about triggers. You know, what are the things that lead people <coughs> doing these things? And it's you know, I think it's important too to you know we're not necessarily demonizing people's feelings. You're going to feel these things. Um, I think the bigger spirit behind our presentation is really about like let's ask ourselves why you know why am I feeling this you know what you know why did that thing why did that trigger why did suggesting that my viewpoint comes from a racialized frame of reference make me upset you know why did it make me cry why did it make me angry you know uh, and I think that's why it's kind of useful to kind of like look at the emotional component of this fragility thing because people's you know, the minute you start to discount people's feelings of anything, you're getting into a gray area that's pushing them away, you know? And so to, to suggest someone's feelings are illegitimate, I think, is, is a dangerous tact to take. More so, let's say, that's a real feeling you're having. Why do you think you're having that, you know? Because I think a lot of these triggers that, that were, are up here, you know, <coughs> Are talking directly about their racial perspectives and things like that. You know, as, as a white person, you know, I've found myself in difficult, you know, emotional points around all of these things. And a lot of the why is because I grew up in a segregated city in the Midwest, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you know. Um, and I didn't have the capacity or the experience or the lens to inter interrogate my own perspective. So, like, when I was introduced to these things, I was just like, hmm. It helped me understand what was going on with my heart and my head around these issues a little bit better. And then you can start to see the forest from, you know, from the trees. So that's, I, I feel like, you know, people of color choosing not to protect the racial feelings of white people. I know that that's always a huge issue when we're talking about fragility because I've heard it time and again from white people saying, well, what about my feelings? Mm -hmm. And it's hard to argue. Yeah, what about your feelings? You know, you're having them. They're legitimate. So I think it's really important, once again, reiterate my point. Let's let's talk about why you're feeling that. Let's start there. Let's start on your feelings. Um, I also feel like we touched on this in the first <coughs> approach to whiteness night, um, which was part of my racial identities as being white, has it's never occurred to me that my feelings don't matter or that I don't have a space to say and announce how I feel to everybody. And that's sort of part of my learning in this process has been to um, be able to just discern when it's appropriate for me to express my feelings and when I need to just listen and, and absorb. Um, and if my feelings become overwhelming, which they do sometimes, then it's my responsibility to either remove myself and cried out or whatever, but that uh, I don't get to take away from the, the topic because I'm having a feeling about it. Um, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. And that was a challenge for me to, to it still is, because I have all these feelings that are natural, I think, and not, not afraid of the feelings themselves, but having to know when it's appropriate to express them and to who and mm -hmm. in what space. And so I feel like this is an important room to be able to do that. Yeah. And, you know, just to kind of connect two points here, it's even more difficult to have the conversation in a culture that's individualist, where that's your problem, mm -hmm. not my problem, you know, and, you know, once again, it's, it's another reason why, as culture, Americans don't really share feelings, you know. Think about how that serves any dominant narrative when people don't talk about how they feel about a thing. Does it serve us, or what does it serve? So. Um, yeah, there's a there's a second a second page of triggers. There's a lot of possible triggers. So uh, if you didn't know, you can now. Um, yeah, the the impact versus intention conversation. How many people have, have been in that? You know, that's that's not what I intended. No, but what you did uh, really hurt. Um, and so let's talk about once again the feelings. Um, access unequal between racial groups, and that's you know that's that's another thing. If people are unaware of the systemic nature of racism, if they located it, if they locate it in individual behavior as opposed to like how does that how do you, how how does the system you know make a difference and how does the system show up as being racist and things like that, 
Um, and if you're not someone who's looked into like the disparity of arrest numbers or execution numbers or the disparity in healthcare or in hiring or in leadership and all the things that we can actually use to triangulate how racism is systemic, you're gonna have you're gonna have a difficult challenge, you know, a challenge to merit meritocracy. Mm -hmm. So and that's the thing I loved about putting these points up, is it kind of notes you know, what, what is being called up, called into challenge in those moments to lead to these fields. So, um, so does, this, does this make sense? Have you ever found, who's, who's seen something on these lists that you've reacted to at some point in your life? Yeah. This is all from D'Angelo. Yeah. 